Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and in my last video, I showed you that I was going to make a, a sculpture of my stepmother's Shih Tzu. Her name is Peppy. This, this is what the real Peppy looks like. It's not a great photograph, but it's really hard to catch her when she's holding still, so that was the best I could do. This is what the sculpture looked like at the end of the last video. I was, um, basically, I had all of the underlying forms done, but I didn't have the clothes on. I was going to <laughs> dress her up in an outfit from the Downton Abbey TV series, one of the um, the winter outfits that Lady Edith was wearing. So th this is what she looks like now. Even though this probably looks really close to what I had in mind, now that I'm actually seeing it in the real world, I'm, I'm not thinking it's all that exciting. Now there were a couple of parts that I'm actually happy with and I would do again if I did another sculpture. And the one thing that I liked the most was the fact that I made the ruffles on the blouse with plaster cloth. And that let me get some fairly realistic draping. What I did was I just folded up the plaster cloth um, and then dipped one edge of it in water, pressed it against the uh, paper mache clay that was already on the sculpture. It was already dry. Then I used a squirt bottle to make the rest of the plaster cloth wet. And then I used a brush to uh, kind of move that water around so that all the plaster got wet. And then after that was hard, so I went back over it with some drywall joint compound and that smoothed it off really nicely. Took most of the um, plaster cloth texture out of it so it looks more like fabric. I made the coat and the hat just with crumpled foil and paper mache clay. The hat needed a little bit of cardboard to, to raise it up a little bit, but then it was just, you know, real simple sculpting. The problem with that is that the hat that actually went with the coat in the photographs that I was looking at of Lady Edith. That hat had a really elaborate Art Nouveau type design above the brim that I knew I was not going to spend hours painting that design. So I went with a different hat that had a ribbon and that took it out of the time period basically. You couldn't tell anymore that it belonged in any way with Lady Edith or the Downton Abbey TV show. Right when I first started out with this project, I thought I was going to make the fur on Peppy in the same way that I put the mane on the horse because it really worked well for the horse, but it did not work very well for Peppy. Uh, it looked okay for the ears, but it just, the, the string was too heavy. Peppy's a Shih Tzu. She's got really long, silky fur. And when I even... I could tell just just when I was putting the string on her neck that it was just way too heavy. It was not going to feel anywhere at all like a Shih Tzu. I tried covering up the string with some uh, paper mache clay, and I think I was tired <laughs> because I I just didn't get that to work either. It ended up looking really choppy. It, it doesn't have to. It, it, it definitely could have been a lot smoother, um, a lot a lot more Shih Tzu like but I did not get that and I didn't like it at all so at, at that point I was about ready to just give up entirely but I decided to try it one more time just one more thing that might work and so I got out the magic sculpt that I had used for her nose and her eyeballs and I started using that I really like the way it came out on her ears I used this um, book from uh, what's his name? Uh, Philippe Faroe, whose name I just mispronounced something terrible. But I used some of the ideas of his for sculpting hair on people. And I do definitely like the way the ears came out on Peppy. But then I kind of forgot what I was doing when I was um, putting the fur on her muzzle and her eyebrows. And I definitely shouldn't have, have put that the, the last little bits on her there. That, that was an attempt to um, make it look like she had the, the fur hanging down over her eyes like she does. Um, I think all Shih Tzus do if, they, if they're not trimmed up. She's kind of between hairdos in the photograph. So you can't really do that without string or something hanging down. You can't just you know, put clay over her eyeballs. That would look weird. So I just did it up, up here 
and it made her look sad. It it changed the expression in a way that I'm really not happy with. I just don't like it. Even though it's like okay, I think I'm going to put it up on a shelf and just leave it and leave it to sit there. Maybe someday I'll get excited about it. Maybe I'll I'll try to change it in some way so that I would like it better. And maybe I'll paint it just to see how that looks. But for now, I think I'm done. But I learned a lot. And that, that's something that I think is really important. And I hear from an awful lot of people who say, Oh, I would just really love to do this or that or this other thing. But I'm afraid to do it because it's probably not going to come out good. <laughs> Probably not going to come out exactly like I wanted it to. And yeah, that's that's possible. <laughs> that happens all the time. But even when it doesn't come out exactly the way you do want it to, you still learn an awful lot. And it's still a lot of fun to do. I enjoyed doing this. I had a lot of fun. I just, I just, I'm not really excited about the way it turned out. But I'm really happy that I did it because I learned so much. And that's a really important thing. There's no way that you can learn a craft without practicing. And that's basically, I'm, that's what I'm going to call this, is practice. I learned a lot, but but it's not a masterpiece. I'm not that excited about it. Um, some parts were okay. Some of it isn't. And I've decided to let that be okay. So now I'm on to my next project. Make sure that you watch for my next video because we'll be doing something entirely different. <laughs> and in the meantime, go make something and come visit me. UltimatePaperMache.com. I'll see you there.